You are looking at the screen of a Sun Microsystems Spark Station running the CEDAR programming environment. This window contains MMM, the multi-device, multi-user, multi-editor. MMM is an experiment to discover how several users, each with one or more pointing devices, can productively collaborate on editing tasks. In our initial scene, we have a command menu, a color menu, home areas for two users named Eric and Steve, a rectangle editor, and a text editor. In a moment, we will discuss the function of each of these objects. Users can associate input devices with themselves using the home areas. Here, Steve clicks on his home area with one of the available mice. Steve's cursor takes on the color of his home area. The system will customize its responses to actions from this mouse according to Steve's preferences. By grabbing another mouse and clicking on his home area, Eric can begin to use the system as well. Within this frame is a toy rectangle editor. By pointing here and clicking with the mouse, Steve creates a rectangle. Its color is determined by Steve's default for that editor, shown in Steve's home area. The frame around the new rectangle is used to manipulate it. To move it, Steve clicks and drags on an edge. To stretch it, he clicks on a corner. Eric can use the same editor. Because Eric has a different preferred creation color, his rectangles are created magenta instead of blue. Eric and Steve can use the rectangle editor simultaneously. For instance, here they drag different rectangles at the same time. Here, they drag two corners of the same rectangle. The lower frame is a toy text editor. Steve can enter text by clicking the mouse in this editor and then typing. While Eric drags the text to a new position, Steve continues to type. MMM uses colored borders to indicate in which editor a user is currently working. For instance, the rectangle editor has a blue border when Steve is working in it, and the text editor has a magenta border when Eric is working in it. When Steve and Eric work in the same editor, both colors are displayed. Users can select groups of objects and their parts. Here Steve selects a rectangle. The corner of the rectangle's frame highlights with his cursor color. Steve can extend the selection to include other rectangles as well. During dragging, all of the selected rectangles move as a unit. Likewise, when Steve clicks on a color in the color menu, all of his selected rectangles become that color. In the text editor, we can select a character or a sequence of characters. The selection is shown by underlining the characters in the user's cursor color. The selected characters can be recolored or deleted. Objects may be selected by several users at once. For instance, here Eric and Steve select some of the same rectangles. Two corners of each rectangle highlight with the colors of the two users. Steve can reposition the rectangles while Eric changes their color. Likewise, in the text editor, our two users can make selections that overlap and use their selections to change text color. If they both try to recolor the same text characters, the last user to apply the color change determines the final color. To save screen space, we use menus that are shared across editors. Actions from these menus are applied to the user's current selection in the user's selected editor. For instance, the color menu changes the color of text, rectangles, and editor backgrounds. Likewise, the delete button can be used to delete text, rectangles, editors, or even itself. The rectangle editor button can be used to embed a rectangle editor in a rectangle wherever that rectangle is located. The color menu button turns a rectangle into a color menu. Like the original color menu, 
This button works on any rectangle, anywhere, in MMM. The menus can also be shared by two users. For instance, Eric and Steve can both use the color menu at the same time. MMM editors can be nested, and users can edit at different levels. For instance, Eric can resize an editor while Steve moves and recolors an object in that editor. In fact, if Steve is quick, he can even change the color of an object in an editor that Eric is moving, using a color palette that is also moving. Ken can join the MMM session by having an existing user type his name, select it, and click the New User menu item. MMM creates a new home area. Ken can then claim a mouse by clicking on this home area. He can now use any of the MMM editors customized to his user preference. Steve is working on two documents at once. In one, he is in the middle of typing a blue italic paragraph. In the other, he is typing a red plain face paragraph. Each text editor window remembers Steve's current mode in that editor, so Steve types the right kind of text in each editor. Steve's home area shows the font family and text color for Steve's currently selected editor. Our workstation has only one keyboard, so only one user can type at a time. Steve's home area displays a highlighted iconic representation of the keyboard. Eric can take control of the keyboard by clicking on this icon. The highlighted icon is then transferred to Eric's home area. The text caret only appears for the user who currently owns the keyboard. In summary, in MMM, users can collaborate simultaneously in a multimedia workspace, even in the same illustration. Users may have distinct modes and style preferences in the same editor, and these modes and preferences may be different from editor to editor. Users can select objects and operate on them with shared control panels. Users can simultaneously edit at different levels in the editor hierarchy. New users can join at any time. Users can collaborate at a fine grain, even stretching the same object at the same time.